What what do you need to have happen to be able to lean into this technology? Sure. Let's start with the machines themselves. Um, anything that is vintage 2002, 2003 or later is fair game for newer. newer. So it's produced in 2002 or 2003, which is nearly two decades ago. That's right. So that's, yeah. Has this capability to broadcast this parametric data off of the, the controller of that machine. Um, if it doesn't, there are upgrade packages available from the machine manufacturers to do that uh, for low single digit thousands of dollars compared to the machine cost. That's a drop in the bucket. Um, it's a, uh, uh, a very simple co uh, connection to the machine. It's an Ethernet plug into the back of the controller. That controller has that data being emitted. We read that data through a wired or wireless connection. If it's wired, it's an IP address and we're ready to go. If it's wireless, we connect and start reading the data, verify that the data is correct and accurate, and we go from Ethernet plug into the controller of that machine to uh, usefulness to the customer, 24 hours. 24 hours. 24 hours. 24 hours. I just want to. So the next yeah. day you're seeing. Next day you're getting. You're watching you're getting, that job unfold. You're watching that job produce that part. Wow. It's it's not hard. It's like plugging in a new computer. Yeah. And I think the, the hardest part is for the people that we talk about, um, you know, being experts at additive and subtractive manufacturing. They think that their involvement in this process of data extraction, compilation, and um, expression is going to involve them. It's going to require their time. It's going to complicate their lives. It's going to get in the way of meeting demand. Zero involvement. Give us the creds to your, uh, your network. We log into your network and we start connecting machines and seeing the data.